Okay, I'm making a real quick video here. Five things that I think are uh, are a must before you do any backpack hunting. If you decide to go in the backcountry or do backpack hunting. First of all, you're going to want to wear your gear. If you have a brand new pair of boots, you tried them on at, you know, the boot store and they feel good, but you haven't worn them. You get out in the backcountry and if there's any, if they stretch out, if they don't fit right, Man, you're going to find out like day two or day three, and you're going to regret not bringing another pair or that's the wrong pair. And you're going to get blisters and you can bring tape for blisters and that's going to help. But you need to you need to use your boots. You need to use your uh, your uh, clothes. You need to you know, you need to do this stuff. Uh, try out different socks. OK, you're going to want to try your gear before you go. And number two, it's kind of the same as number one. You're going to try your gear. You need to be working these stoves. If you're going to, I have a little, uh, what do they call it, a rocket stove, a homemade one. Uh, it's made out of a thermos bottle, uh, well, a vacuum bottle. thing does great. But I use it with pellets. I use it with sticks. But I have, uh, the first time I tried it out, I'm out on a trail. And I had, I had to learn this thing. And uh I had to learn what works, what don't. I like to start my fires with uh, dryer lint, uh, but I found out in that rocket stove, you only want to use a little bit of lint because what happens is uh, when the wood starts burning, the lint might go out and it might actually slow the air from coming through. So I had to learn just a little bit of lint. Sometimes I'll drop a couple drops of something on it before I put it, you know, and I'll have a little tiny uh, medicine bottle with it. Maybe it'll have some lighter fluid or something. Some uh, some people use cooking oil, whatever. but. I had to figure out what worked in that stove. So I, when I come back from my first uh, backpack trip with that, I, I sat outside on cold days on hot, and I worked that thing. I, I went and got kindling. I used pellets. I tried all different things. Okay, so that's number two. Uh, number th number three, really important backpacking tip is you need to do some backpacking before you go on a big backwoods hunt. Take your uh, take your gear and do some uh, weekend backpacking. Uh, you can backpack, honestly, in your backyard if you have to, to get some practice. You can also go on public land. Uh, I go up to where I hunt. I have a, a piece of property I lease, so I'll just go up there, and I, I won't really cover a lot of ground there. But you can go on, you know, the Appalachian Trail. You can go on these public lands where they got hiking trails, and you can hike. Even if you have to hike the same trails over and over to get some mileage to learn your gear, your your backpack. You're going to learn your backpack. You're going to learn how to set up your tent. You want to take your tent down and take it with you every day, even if you come back to the same spot so you can be setting it up. Because when you go out uh, in the backwoods, you're not going to want to hike a long ways back to your tent because if it's dark, it's going to be hard to find. If it snows, you're going to cover up your tracks. It's just going to be hard to, uh, you, you're going to want to, you're going to want to take the with you. You're going to want to be, to have that option that you've took it down, you've took it with you. Um, number four is you need to try your meals. You need to come up with homemade meals. You need to buy some. I know the uh, mountain house stuff could get expensive, but you need to t you need to um, try these out at home. Uh, and I'm telling you, the worst thing you can do is is go hunting with something and think, well, it's not going to matter what it tastes like. I'll just eat it. Honestly, it can really ruin a hunt just eating stuff that you don't care for just because. Other people like it don't mean you will. Another thing you can do if it's expensive to buy the mountain house, you can buy it in bulk, buy the Mylar uh, vacuum seal bags, and they they you and they open just like a mountain house bag. You tear the top, then they zip lock. You put your hot water in, so you can actually buy them in bulk. Buy the you can buy, I think you could buy fifty Mylar bags that are that you use a vacuum sealer on. You can use the oxygen absorbers, but if you make them right before you go hunt, you don't need the oxygen absorber because they're only going to be in there for a couple weeks because you're going to be using them and then you can uh you can actually buy the stuff in like containers and then just measure out and because it's cheaper you can have your meal a little bit bigger if you want you know if you if the say the mountain house meal let's say you buy beef stroganoff and it's uh it's just not enough you're, you want a little bit more um you can actually you know you go instead of putting like a half a cup of 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 that in you could put three quarter of a cup or a cup or whatever and the last thing is uh, making sure that you're not bringing a bunch of extra clothes because you don't know what you're going to buy quality stuff like a really good pair of pants. A good pair of hunting pants is going to be $200. Um, once you find a pair like a Goodwill or on sometimes on Facebook, people sell stuff. 
but you want you want a shirt that's uh, some kind of wool, like 90% wool, something that's made. And I, honestly, for me, for what I bought, I went on and I watched uh, what Steve Ranella said he uses. I watched what Randy Newberg said he uses. I went there and I kind of decided what's everybody using, not the brand so much as the type of shirt. And then I went out and found uh, what I could afford. And uh, um, if you want to save money, don't save it on your clothes. You get out there and the temperature drops 30, 40 degrees, it's down almost zero. You're not going to want to give up your hunt. You've got a thousand dollars worth of tags. You've got a thousand dollars worth of. Uh, for me to go to Colorado hunt and come back, I'm going to have almost seven, eight hundred dollars in fuel. Okay, I'm talking about gasoline from a pickup. That's it. Just, just, just for that, I'm going to have that much money in my game tag, unless I go with like a cow tag, which I'm going to go with a bull and cow tag, because that's the way, the way it is. You either get a cow tag for five something. Six something almost seven hundred dollars for a bull tag, which you can kill a cow with. You know, last if you need them, if you just want to bring some meat home because your hunt's almost over and you haven't had a good hunt. Um, so those five tips there are going to go a long ways. Don't go hunting without trying your gear out. Take your boots, wear them. If you got a new pair, if you got a pair of boots that you've that you've had for a long time, you're like, well, I hunt with these every year. They're high quality boots. I'm going to take them. Yeah, but you've climbed up in a tree stand and sat for eight hours, and then climbed down, went to your camp, took your put your shoes back on like I do. You haven't really worked them. When you start walking miles and you're walking up and down steep terrain on rock, you get out there. There's rocks. There's there's it's it's not like walking. Where, where I hunt, I'll go around batteries, but up there, there's no way to go around them. The air, you have a whole hillside full of scree. you got to walk across that stuff. You need to be practicing with your material or with your uh, with your gear, your, the boots you're going to wear. Um, when it comes to boots and clothing, I recommend just you know, buy once, cry once. Don't don't try to save money. I, I like to, my pack is an Alpine pack. It's a Commander Freighter or Commander something. It carries your gun. It's cheap. It, I got it on sale for less than $300. I think it less than $200. I think it was like $199. Honestly, it's not as good as a, um, you know, as the more expensive packs, the ones that people are using. You know, um, the, the packs can, can be $600, and it might not even be the one you want, you know. It might not be the right one for you. This one here come in about 5,200 uh, cubic inches, 5,250. It weighs about seven pounds, not the lightest pack. And the material, it's not as good as some of your high end, but it's working for me. And I paid, I think I paid 189 or 199 or something, 179 from Sportsman's Guide. And I'm actually pretty happy with it. One of these days, I'm going to buy a better pack. Uh, when it if I wear it out, but it works. It, it's you can you can take the pack off, put your your big chunks of meat in between it, strap it back over it like you can the more expensive you know the better ones, and it, and it works. So, but uh, so if you want to save some money on your pack, on your meals, stuff like that, buy some nor buy some stuff you know. But when it comes to your boots and your and your clothes, uh, you don't want to pack a bunch of extra clothes. Everybody pack. I did it. You know, I've always took like extra shirts. They won't need need them. Never needed them. Um, buy good stuff that doesn't, uh, the, you know, the wool socks, they don't start smelling. If they do toward the end of the hunt, you're going to have clothes in your, in your, um, in your vehicle. Unless you're car camping. If you're actually backwards camping and living in your tent, I suggest trying your tent out. Make sure it's going to try to take it out on some cold days because, if you can't take a night in your tent, you know, if you need a better tent, you need to find this out before you get to Colorado. Colorado's not as bad, but you get up into, like, Idaho and places, I guess, like Wyoming. I mean, you're going to get some sub-zero temperatures. And you're going to, that's when you're going to see the game. It's when it gets real cold. So you got to have, you got to know your stuff. you got to know your equipment. Be prepared, and you'll have a good hunt. Do the homework. Take the time to try your equipment out. Try your Try your meals out. Don't just pack up what Steve Ranella and Randy Newberg use, and okay, that's going to work for you. Uh, they're great hunters. These guys have done it. But they're telling you what they use, and that works for them. So, I mean, it's going to work for you. And uh, so you're going to, you, you know, try out your equipment. 
Uh, go on some hiking trips. Do, do trips without a pack and just walk for miles. Up down steep mountains. Get get this stuff to where you know it works. Because if it don't work, you don't want it there. I mean, a $1,000 pair of boots aren't going to do you any good if your feet get sore and you can't take it. Where maybe a $100 pair of boots, well, yeah, $200 pair of boots, that the right boot is better. Pick, you know, get get your equipment and use it. Use your equipment. Don't, don't skimp out on this. You'll regret it if you do.